wire. An arty, abrasive, uncompromising post-punk band. If that's not your kind of thing, then you're probably going to be horrified by this video and you should probably stop watching right now. I'm going to be doing some more tasteful blues licks very soon, I promise. But if you are into Wire or if you're open to discovering them, then you've come to the right place because this is going to be the first in a series of Wire-based lessons where I'm going to take you through how to play some of my favourite Wire songs. First up is X Lion Tamer from their debut album Pink Flag and it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Just briefly a little bit of background information for those of you who aren't familiar with Wire. They are a British band formed in the mid 70s, usually referred to as a post-punk band if that label actually means anything. I imagine Wire themselves are probably one of those bands who hate being labelled as anything at all. And they're one of those bands that I first came across indirectly. They're a very influential band and a lot of other bands that I liked would mention Wire in their interviews. I think they've been a big influence on people like Sonic Youth. Minute Men, Guided by Voices, and I actually think the first Wire song that I heard was R.E.M.'s cover of Strange, which was on their Document album, and that led me to discover the actual music of Wire itself. And they're still best known for their classic trio of 70s albums, Pink Flag, Chairs Missing, and 154, and those are the albums that I'm still the most familiar with, and the albums that I'm going to be focusing on in these videos though Wire are still going and they're still making great and interesting music which I really must check out myself soon and I've been told by a reliable source that good albums from the, the later period of Wire are Send and Red Barked Tree so I'm going to be checking those out myself very soon but for now let's get down to business and take a look at how X Lion Tamer is played. This is a song from the poppier end of the wire spectrum, I think. It's a great song. It's a fairly easy song to play. It's not a total beginner's song because we've got quite a lot of bar chords flying around and there's some interesting rhythmic things going on. And uh, it's a great lyric as well. It uh, seems to all be about Batman and Robin, Lone Ranger and Tonto and uh, Fish Fingers. So I'm not exactly sure what they're on about in this song. I'm not really sure what they're on about in most wire songs, actually, but it's uh, great stuff lyrically. Speaking, let me take you through the song section by section. We've got two or three sections to this song. Let's start with the introduction, which is also the chorus part to the song. That goes like this. That's the basic idea. All played with bar chords. We're starting with a D, part, D bar chord, fifth string root shape. And then we're going to an A bar chord, six string root, down to an open E chord, and then we've got a G major bar chord, this is six string root at the third fret. If you're not sure of some of these bar chord shapes, then I have done a couple of detailed bar chord lessons, which you might like to check out before attempting this song. So I say we're starting with this D bar chord shape. What uh, Colin Newman tends to do when he's playing bar chords uh, with a fifth string root is cover the sixth string as well. So technically we've got a D with an A in the bass. You've got the fifth in the bass there. And it just gives you a slightly heavier sound. You've got the option to do that whenever you're playing fifth string root bar chords. So we're starting with the D. We've got a bar or so on that. But then we're pushing in to the A major bar chord. And when I say push, it's a term that I use to refer to that feeling when you're changing the chord on an off beat. And here we're changing on the and of four, and it's just generating a bit of excitement and momentum in the song. So we've got one, two, three, and four, and two, three, four. See how we're changing to that second chord on the and of four. Uh, strumming wise, 
I'm just going to keep my strumming hand moving up and down in kind of an eighth note feel. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Then we're coming down to an open E chord. And a little tip here, if you're playing an open E chord and you're going from that to E form bar chords, is that you've got the option of fingering your open E chord like this with uh, third, fourth finger and uh, second finger and leaving your index finger free. Um, then it's just a bit easier to transition into those E form bar chord shapes. So that's the way I'm fingering my E chord here. We've got uh, a bar's worth of this. And again, we're pushing into the next chord. So we're going from E to G, we're changing to the G on the and of fours. It's one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Then it goes round again. It's just a four chord cycle here, so. into the verse that goes like this so you can see it's all played using this same E form bar chord shapes but this is a little bit more rhythmic so we're starting at the seventh fret on a B major chord and we're playing in this kind of rhythm it's a quick down, up, down, down, up, down, rest, rest. Three, four. Do that three times. Then we've got just going between A and G. It's A, G, A, G, A. Then we're back to the B. Down, up, down. Three times again. And then we're just going A, G, A and letting it hang. I, th I think that all goes round another time and then we're back into the chorus. And that's about it for this song. You could just talk about the ending of the song and that kind of comes from the main chorus riff. Just kind of ending on an unusual chord. We go down to the E and then we've got F, F sharp, G to end. And you, you can hear on the recording some lead guitar parts which come in towards the end of the song and, and that seems to me to all be kind of eight notes played quite high up the neck, probably on the B string. So we've got things like this. So the 10th fret on the B, 12th fret, 15th fret, possibly letting the open high E string come through a little bit as well. Uh, I'd suggest just listening to the record and playing around with some of those ideas. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy learning to play the song. As I said, I've got lots more wire coming at you here very soon. If this video hasn't quite persuaded you about wire and about post-punk, then I've got lots of other content on my channel. Go and find yourself a nice blues lick or a bit of folk finger style. I do try my best to keep everybody happy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.